Hey everyone, I'm James, and today I wanna to talk about deployment. Everyone's most fun part of the actual creating projects is deploying their applications and getting them out into the world. And there's many different ways of deploying applications, and today I wanna to talk about what actually happens when you run the azd up command under the hood and what .NET Aspire is doing to enable that process and enabling other tools in the ecosystem to help developers deploy their applications. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And we're gonna go from start to finish and actually deploying our application and showing what's happening under the hood. Now, if you remember though, like .NET Aspire is building blocks for our application development, right? So it offers up a bunch of different things that makes our lives as developers better. It makes our applications better and helps us build better apps. And all the things are different optional, right? So things like smart defaults, enabling those health checks and resiliency, you can turn those on, you can customize them how you like them for your app. You get a beautiful developer dashboard for a local or using it uh, wherever you want to deploy it orchestration to boot up all of your applications together, which is sort of the key to deployment, which we'll talk about here. And of course, service discovery and integrations enable us to really make our applications rich with functionality. Now, the one area though, that we're gonna focus on today and which often we don't talk about enough is deployment because that's sort of the end thing. That is something that is unique to different applications. So yes, we do see great examples of how to easily get your applications up and running with great tooling. How does that stuff actually work? But before we actually go there, like I want to like have a sit down and like talk a little bit about deployment. Okay. When we're deploying our distributed applications or any application, it's kind of tricky to be honest with you, because if I was to survey everyone watching right now, what is in your application? What services and integrations are you using? Uh, where are you deploying them? How are you deploying them? Do you want to use Kubernetes? Do you want to use ACA? Or do you have a bunch of functions? Do you want to use app service? Are you using containers even? Like what is in your application? What are your IT and security requirements? Like that is going to be different for every single application, every single company out there, which means at a high level, deploying applications is complex because it's complex. It's just complex. It just is, right? We have all of these different sort of roadblocks that get in our way, which makes it really hard for there to be a perfect one-stop shop for deploying every single different type of application in the entire world, right? So when we take that in context, we say, okay, knowing that one, deploying applications is difficult and it's complex and they're all different. There's a lot of choices out there. Well, how can .NET Aspire help me deploy my applications better and faster? Or how can I use .NET Aspire my applications and continue to deploy how I want to deploy today? So let's talk about those deployment options. You now, when you have .NET Aspire in there, you know we've orchestrated everything in our app host, and I want to deploy things. So how do I do it? Well, first, like you could just continue to deploy like you have been today. That's option number one. Uh, this is something that people ask me, like, well, I'm already deploying. I already have a CI/CD pipeline set up. I already have my Docker files. I already have um, Helm charts all set up. I already have, you know, everything all set up already, right? My IT pros and everyone in development is super happy with all of our requirements that we've met. We're deploying it here and here and 18 different places. I just want to keep deploying it there. And the answer is, yeah, just keep doing that, right? Just keep deploying your application as is. And you might have to make some subtle changes to it. So for example, uh, if you're using service discovery and you're in adding integrations, well, you're gonna have different connection strings. You're gonna have to figure out, okay, are we gonna reuse existing connection strings, update that in my app host or different areas that I'm looking for connection strings, uh, or do I just update my actual connection strings on my environment variables on my cloud provider to reflect what is being generated for me. And you might be saying, well, how do I know it's generated without just going into the dashboard and looking at every connection string? And I'll show you, and I'll tell you exactly how this is happening. Now, beyond that, there are other sort of tools to help streamline the process. And what's happening here is that we have everything in the app manifest, and there's a process in between here and the tooling, which is generating a schema for our application. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So that schema can actually be used by other tools like the Azure Developer CLI or Aspirate, for example, that take them and help us deploy our applications into other areas and work in other tooling such as Visual Studio, which uses the Azure Developer CLI to go and deploy our application to Azure Container Apps today. 
Now, all of this is optional, right? You can continue to play exactly. You can choose to use Aspirate or Azure Developer CLI. You can choose to check out the manifest and bicep files and a bunch of other stuff. That is totally up to you. You get to choose what you want to do, right? There are so many options available because of this setup. But let's say we were, for example, using the Azure Developer CLI and we wanted to deploy our application with AZD up. How exactly does this work under the hood? So let's walk through the process here. You go into your terminal and you say AZD up. The first thing that that is going to do is call a .NET run command. Now it passes in a bunch of different commands and it produces an Aspire manifest file. Now that Aspire manifest file, it serves as a reference guide for deployment tool builders, such as AZD, to figure out how to deploy .NET Aspire projects on a specific hosting platform, whether that's on-premise or in the cloud. And this is a JSON format. We're going to take a look at it today. Okay, so we have that Aspire manifest, then what? Well, AZD up specifically will be then calling AZD provision, which generates bicep files in memory, actually by default. Uh, and you can think of bicep as sort of uh, definitions for deploying Azure resources. Uh, it's kind of like TypeScript for ARM in a way uh, in, in there, as once described to me. And once it's generated this, it's going to trigger Azure's ARM APIs uh, in your subscription and resources groups that we set up earlier in the process. Now from here, it's then going to call AZD deploy, which executes and uses that same exact uh, Aspire manifest. Now part of this, it's going to call .NET publish. Uh, to build container and it has a different publishing support to generate those container images. And then once it has everything, it's going to push to our ACR registry and create all of our resources based on those bicep files that were created for us automatically earlier. And that is the pipeline of what is generated for us. So let's actually do that. Let's deploy something. Okay. So over here, I have my tiny shop, and this is a tiny little shop that has a back end and a front end over here. And if I open this up, we can see that, yeah, we have our uh, Blazor front end here with a bunch of products uh, and this outdoor products here in the tiny shop. And then we have our resources. This has a Redis cache. Um, this is just using the Docker IO uh, container image uh, over here. And then it has a products and store over here project. We can see that it's using all the telemetry, all the things, all the different you know, products, all the gets coming in here as I'm using the application uh, here. So that is my application. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this down here and stop debugging. So we first see that the cache is being used by the products uh, API. And then over here, the store is using that API. And it's marking this external HTTP endpoints. And that specifically is something that needs to be exposed to the internet. So that is something that we're sort of inherently telling Aspire to do something with and to do something with is specifically put that in the manifest. So whatever tooling is built on top of this knows what to do with that. Okay. So that is our project. So you can imagine this builds up over time, but I want to make it consumable so you can see what's going on here. Okay. So normally I would right click publish, come into my terminal over here and I would say AZD up and AZD in it and all these things like that. We're not going to do that today. We're going to actually see what's happening under the hood when I see and say AZD up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run a command, which is .NET run, and then I'm going to pass in some additional parameters, such as the publisher, which is going to be a manifest, and then an output path, which is going to be aspire manifest.json. So that's what we're going to do. This is going to build a project, take a look at everything that's sort of happening over there, and generate a manifest for us and put it into the app host. Okay, so what is in this Aspire manifest? Well, again, like I mentioned earlier, this is really a reference guide for the tools, in this case, AZD, to figure out what and how to deploy, what is in my application. So the first thing we're going to see here is that there are some resources. In fact, it's all resources over here. We can see that there's a cache, which if we look back, that's the key. That's the little key that I put there as, as the cache. It's a container type. It's going to give us connection string, which are the cache bindings for the host and the port. It specifically is going to use the Docker IO Redis 7.2 uh, image, and then it gives us the bindings here. Over in our products, what we're going to see is that, yeah, this has a type of project, specifically this project path. So in contrast, 
the type was container and it was specifically the image. And then this shows me all of the environment variables that need to be set up for us. So connection strings underscore cache. So that is the connection string for the cache and that's using the connection string. We can also see things that are configured, such as uh, open telemetry over here and the forward headers that are enabled and HTTP ports here. It's also going to show us the bindings, so HTTP uh, and TCP and our transport uh, and for HTTP and HTTPS. More interesting over here, what we're going to see is that we see the store. Now, the store, for example, is going to be another project. And in this case, we're going to see not only all the normal, normal ASP.NET Core and Open Telemetry stuff, but we also see the services underscore products underscore HTTP. So this is that service discovery. Same thing here with that connection strings underscore cache. So here, this would be the specific connection string, the environment variable that I would need to set up. And then we can see specifically over here that the bindings are telling us that it's HTTP and HTTPS, but note that external is set up here. Okay, if we go back over here, with external HTTP endpoint. So when we define that, we said that please put into our manifest file that we would like that to be exposed externally, which means the tooling will pull that up automatically for me. So that is our Aspire manifest. And this can be used by any different tooling out there, such as AZD. So what does AZD do with this? It's a great question. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here and we are gonna now say AZD infra synth so synthesize the infrastructure so this now is going to analyze the dotnet aspire project and create a bunch of files for us cool and in fact they're all here inside the infra folder so if i drop this down we're going to see that there's a bunch of different files the first thing that we're going to see is the main bicep and again when i say azd up this is generated in memory here and this is going to be generated every single time i say azd up or change my application so this is always changing you don't want to like use this as infrastructure unless you're going to regenerate it every time so if you make changes it will be overridden every time when we do, we do this right so here we have our main bicep so this is our main entry point into deployment so we can see things about the subscription the environment name we can see the different resources the tags the different you know uh output for managed identity and different connection strings that are going to get set up automatically for us we can also see our parameters that are piped in. So our principal ID, environment name, and location that are set up here. We can also then go into our resources.bicep. And what this specifically is doing is defines the Azure resources required to support the .NET Aspire project model. So in this case, it's going to show us the managed identity, the container registry. It's going to show us our author authorization role assignments that are set up for us automatically. It's going to then uh, put in operational insights for log analytics and manage environments, um, set up our Aspire dashboard here for us, and it's going to go ahead and do everything else that is needed. Now, on top of that, though, we can also see the cache template YAML, which specifically is the definition for that cache. And we can see everything that's going to be deployed here. And we also get one for the products and we can see what's going on exactly in the location. If the ingress is external or internal, if it allows insecure or not over here, all the things that were generated off of that Aspire manifest and the same for the store. So we see this here, except for here, the external is the uh, true for the ingress. So we see that all up right there. So that is how we go from first generating the manifest to how AZD takes it and synthesizes it directly into infrastructure that can be used. All right, let's go ahead back to the slide really quick here. So you may be saying, well, how do I learn more about this and what else can I do? Well, first and foremost, there is amazing documentation that goes through every single bit and more of what I just showed you and how you can use it in your development process. Go to aka.ms forward slash dotnet dash aspire, and that'll take you there and then go to the deployment section that will go through everything. I also want to point out Aspirate. Aspirate is an open source project that uses the same exact Aspire manifest file, but enables you to basically create infrastructure for other deployments, such as Kubernetes service, for example. So definitely check that out as well, based on what your needs are. It's going to be really amazing to see this community flourish and help us deploy to many more places based on our application needs. 
All right, that's going to do it for me. So definitely make sure that you check out all the event resources at the aka.ms below that I'm sure is in the chat right now. And that's going to do it for me. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you learned something cool about how that easy to up works under the hood. Cheers.